Hello, Brigadiers and Brigadettes and hockey fans alike. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to my channel. Now let's jump into some hockey content. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. If you are news, please make sure to subscribe. And then if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And sorry for it being out so late today. I had to work a soccer game for my university. Went into double OT, so I got back late. Anyway, these are our weekly Wednesdays. We're going to be talking about three things, not looking at my notes a lot, just kind of talking about the subject. So we're going to be talking about the first subject of today, which is the sad news for the hockey world that Jack Eichel will miss the rest of the season this year with a herniated disc in his neck, if I do believe. And... You know, it's a tough blow, and it's a never-ending season for Sabres fans. Um, you know, they really just cannot catch a break. It's just the season that just drags on for them, really. And it feels like there is a Blue Jackets fan that it's dragged on as well. This will be the first year that Jack Eichel won't hit double-digit goals in his career as he finished with 18 points, 2 goals, and 16 assists in 21 games played. Um... And yeah, it's just kind of tough. I think Eichel's dealt with some different injuries this year. I know he's had at least one more besides this, and I feel like he's missed even more because of that. Uh, I think he's had multiple injuries this year, maybe three, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of tough for Sabres fans. But this is kind of the time where you have somebody step up. You know, the younger guys, Darlene, great example. Time for him to step up. Um, Dylan Cousins, Victor Olofsson, these are names that come to mind. This team is young. These guys with, you know, I'd say they probably get about 15 games left. They should be trying to up their game. And especially Darlene, try to work on both ends. Olofsson, Cousins. Cousins probably just work on more of the offensive game. But try to get better in some regard. And try to, I don't want to say take advantage. Because it's really unfortunate that Eichel's hurt. But, you know, you're, you're probably going to have more offensive responsibility. So try to take advantage of those moments, I guess. And if anything, I just feel bad for Eichel. And, you know, here's to a speedy recovery for him. The next thing that I wanted to talk about were the Columbus Blue Jackets, which they decided to gain assets. It's been kind of a sad and rough week for us as we traded away Riley Nash, uh, David Savard, and Nick Foligno. And in some of these group chats, people were saying things like, oh, I'm so mad at them, stuff like that. And, you know, just people on my DMs are saying this is ridiculous. They backstabbed us. Yarmo Kekalainen's a good GM, and here's why. He got a 33-year-old, 34-year-old Nick Foligno, who is on an expiring deal. We got a first-round pick with him and a fourth-round pick. And we're only having to pay half of his salary throughout the rest of this season. David Savard. Savard is still a good defenseman. I think a top-four pairing defenseman. And, you know, he is like 30. And it does stink. It does stink. We get a first-round pick out of that in Tampa Bay and a third-round pick, and we're only having to pay half a salary. Nash, we got a seventh-round pick. I would have liked to see a little bit more, but that's fine. The thing is, you've got guys that are all 30-plus, and I think we came away with this trade deadline in the sense of we got better with assets. Probably, yes. I think that they were good moves. I was skeptical thinking that Savard and Foligno could get first-round picks out of them, especially due to their age, but... Here we are. And the thing is, you know, it does stink. It hurts. I don't like the fact that these guys are gone. In fact, I wanted them to spend their whole career with us. Now, Foligno, I played some seasons in Ottawa. But Savard, he was one of our guys. Either way, I wanted all of them to continue to play their whole career with us. You know, Nash, I liked his defensive play as well. But that's not what a GM does. A GM makes sure that the team's future looks better than what the outlook is now, potentially. A team like us, we're in 7th place in our division. I hate thinking about it that way, but we need assets. And Foligno and Savard, they could all come back. And that's the thing. We got assets and they could come back. It's tough. But what do you want them to do? Toil away here when they could go possibly win a cup? I'm tr I get it. I want them to stay. I get that too. But GMs, any GM, should look at one of these things and think, Okay, got an old guy, probably wants the chance to win a cup. I can flip him. He might come back. We get a first-round pick. There you go. So that's why I'm not mad about it. Yarmo is a good GM. Back to the matter. And then finally, for these weekly Wednesdays, I wanted to talk about the Arizona Coyotes. They've been a team that's scratched and clawed and fought their way, and maybe they're not the sexiest team to watch in hockey. But they've been around that playoff spot, 
you know, at least right in that hunt for most of the year. And right now, they are just, I don't know what phrase I can use because, you know, you got to make it family friendly, but they're sliding. They've lost five games in a row. And that's right as the Blues are starting to win games. I think they've won three in a row. They've taken that fourth spot. And all I have to say is this. It is a very fun year for Coyotes fans in the sense that I think that you are in the hunt, so that's nice. But I feel like it'd be a very disappointing year to be in the hunt this long and miss out because you start to slump. And I don't know. I haven't looked into this too deep. I've been crazy busy for the Coyotes, and I'm not going to lie. It's not a team that I pay a ton of attention to. I'm very busy. I'd like to be able to pay attention to all the teams as much as possible, which I try to do. But the thing is, don't end the season on a low note after you've been so competitive all year. They only play the Blues one more time, so there's not really much ground that you can gain there. You could gain, you know, you could take them over. I think they play them in a few days. But that's the thing. You have to take advantage of the other games now. You don't really get to play St. Louis anymore. It's done. It's over. You've got one game left. Finish that off. Win that. But after that, the fate is in your hands, and you're going to have to figure it out. I'd love to see him there, and we'll see how it goes. That's going to wrap it up for everybody, or for today's video today, excuse me. Please make sure to subscribe if you have not. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it as well. Everybody stay safe, have a great day, and stay away from COVID, all right? Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes, and hockey fans in general. This is your captain signing off. Have a great week.